who sends forth his al-waridat at the time we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our awrad and may the greatest and the finest blessings be on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family and his companions and those who follow his teachings in the rightful manner to the day of judgment. Uh, I've just been asked to sort of come and uh, talk about the etiquettes of uh, itikaf uh, as well as uh, you know some uh, the adabs of the masjid and things like this. So I'm going to speak in English but at some points you know I might just say something in Urdu but if I want to confuse you I'll switch to Arabic uh, unless there's people who understand Arabic here. For billahi tawfiq. You know, itikaf is uh, considered as one of the uh, essential parts of the life of a Muslim. We know that the Prophet wasallam, prior to receiving revelation, and also at the point of revelation, he was making exclusion. So he was going to the mountain, he was taking provisions with him. And at this time, what, what, what was he doing? He was severing himself, cutting himself from the dunya, from the, you know, the daily things that we become busy with in our lives. And so this, consider it to be something, a prophetic tradition. As we know from the hadith of Sayyidina Umm al-Mu'mineen, the mother of the believer, Sayyidina Aisha, the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, she said, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sat at itikaf, you know, the last ten days of Ramadan, and after he passed away, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then his his wives they took over, and so, so itikaf is something great, but there is a purpose in itikaf. This is cutting yourself away from the dunya and holding yourself in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the person, uh, the hadith says that the closest a person is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when a person is prostrating, when he's making sajda. And so the ulama, they said, a person who's making itikaf is like the person who's making sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the person when he's making sajda, he's saying, Ya Allah, I will not raise my head from this position until you have forgiven me. And this is what a person who's sitting at itikaf, he's saying, Allah, I have turned to you in my whole, as collectively, from my mind, from my physical, my spiritual, I have come to you. And I've come here seeking your mercy, your forgiveness, and you to set me free from the hellfire. So, during the etikaf, uh, you know, there isn't anything specific that you have to do. But the thing, the masajid, they are built for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the important thing. But what does it mean? the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of our great ulama by the name of Imam al-Nawawi rahimullah ta'ala, he has a very nice uh, collection of the prophetic invocations and supplications. It's a book of du'as. It's a du'as that the Prophet sallallahu did in every circumstances of his life, every situation. And so in his introduction to this, he says that what does dhikr mean? What is dhikr? Is it sitting and rolling beads? Is it reciting the Quran? What, what does dhikr mean? He says the purpose of dhikr is to have what? The presence of Allah Ta'ala in your heart. This is what dhikr is. It is not about quantity. You know, I've got to do this. I've got to knock out 20 rakats every night on my own or whatever it is. No. It is to hold the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart. That we feel the existence 
of our Creator, that I'm turned to you, Allah. I have held myself back from all the worldly glitters, distractions, and I have given up everything. Even, you know, the Prophet ﷺ, when he used to sit in the masjid, they used to, he used to sit. If you have been to Medina, there are a number of uh, significant pillars. Okay, and there is a pillar which is named the pillar of Tawbah. Okay, this is one great companion, Abu Lubaba. He tied himself here and he said, I will not release myself here until Allah Ta'ala has forgiven me. And then the Prophet Sallallahu gave him the glad tidings. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would have his uh, mattress, whatever it was made of, and he would sit here in his itikaf. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith, now this is something that we're looking for in itikaf. We've, we've cut ourselves away from the dunya, we've come to the masjid, the best of the places, surely the most uh, beloved places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what? The masajid. Ahabu biladi illallah ta'ala masajiduha. The most beloved places to Allah ta'ala on this face of this earth is what? The masjid. And the most dis detested places or the disliked places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the marketplaces, the, the malls, the shopping centers. It's not that we're not allowed to go there, but because there's the least of the remembrance of Allah ta'ala is happening. Because, you know, people's minds are diverted and, you know, you're busy in your daily whatever you need to go and do into, into town. But the masjid is the best place. So once you're in the masjid, you're making it take off, you're in search of something. From a hadith that we know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that search, he said physically, he said what? He said taharra. He said look for, search for the night of power, Laylatul Qadr. So this is something that you're looking forward to. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you've, you've cut yourself from the dunya, you've come here in search of the presence of Allah Ta'ala and you're looking for this beautiful night that Allah Ta'ala has made such as the Laylatul Qadr or other nights which are, uh, exist in the Islamic calendar. So in these last 10 days, but in which nights? Allah Alam, there's many different uh, variations of hadith that say that it can be on this night or this night, but Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala from the, this is one of the beauties of this religion that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala has kept certain things in secret. So it kind of creates this further enthusiasm in us, motivation to look for it. Maybe I've, I've found it, but if I haven't found it, it might be in the next night. So I'll do the, what I did in this night and I'll do it the next night also. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, he said, search, look for the Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, if it's 30 days. Then also we have another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said, look for it in the odd nights. Okay, the 21st, the 23rd, 5th, 7th, and the 29th night. What do we do? I mean, we'll come to this point briefly. But the Prophet ﷺ, again, he taught his beautiful wife, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, who are considered to be what? As in the words of Allah ta'ala, they are ummahatul mu'mineen. They are the mothers of the believers. So the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, they are mothers. So Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Sadiq, she said, the Prophet told me to read a specific supplication. And she said, he taught me to say these words in this particular night. If people don't know it, there are brothers listening here, they can always bring you a print out of this. And then, you know, this is a, this is a dua that you don't have to, it's not particular to this night, even though it has its virtues of being read in this night. You could read it at any time. She said, the Prophet وسلم, said, she, he said to her, they read these words, Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. Allah, you love pardoning. So therefore, pardon me, forgive me. Now the ulama, they say it, Allah is a ghafoor and he's a afu. What is the difference between these two beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ghafoor is that Allah ta'ala pardons you. But they're not effaced, they're not removed. Those sins, those mistakes and mishaps that may have been committed by us, they still remain. So Ghafoor, he forgives you, but they still exist. But 
a full one, it means they are totally removed. Okay, so this is a beautiful supplication that the Prophet ﷺ has taught our mother. And so therefore it was conveyed to us to say these beautiful words in this particular. And there's no limit to saying this. Okay, you know there is another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Tuba mani wajada istighfaran kathiran. He said, good news for that person who finds plenty of seeking forgiveness, istighfar in his uh, scrolls on the day of judgment. So we're always turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know from hadith, two different variations of hadith. The Prophet sallallahu he would sit and he would make istighfar sometimes 70 times, sometimes 100. And we know from another hadith that the Prophet sallallahu companions, they would sit and they would make istighfar collectively also. So making istighfar. And this is the way to do it. We have to present ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as meek, we, we're no nothingness. We are worthless people. And we have to turn to Allah Ta'ala first and foremost, seeking His forgiveness. And then we have to ask for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's mercy. And then we ask for Allah Ta'ala's bounties. These are the, some of the uh, virtues of uh, sitting at a calf. Uh, perhaps I should quote another hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned that whosoever sits in itikaf, his sins are forgiven. The person who remains in the masjid, to the point, the, the moments he spends in the masjid, he is forgiven. So there's many, many virtues regarding sitting itikaf. So, but really now we, what, what we want to do, maybe touch on a little bit of adab of the masjid and also the itikaf. When you're going to sit in itikaf, there's nothing difficult. All you're going to do is make a niyyah. That you're sitting a sunnah if i'tikaf, following in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And i'tikaf is for 10 days. Now obviously, you know, it's in the month of Ramadan in the last 10 days. And, uh, you know, part of it is that you should be fasting. Okay. Perhaps, you know, somebody might fall ill and he might not be able to fast or whatever. But you continue, you continue sitting your i'tikaf. Okay. So if that happens for any instance. So you make an intention that I'm doing the etikaf of sunnah, following in the footsteps of Rasulullah for these 10 days. And then you busy, busy yourselves in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what have, you, what have you done? It's like you've, been, you've imprisoned yourself. This is what you've done basically. You've imprisoned yourself here in the masjid. And when you're a prisoner, when I used to work in a prison many, many years back in Nottingham, prisoners are not allowed many things to... To do you know they have very minimal activities right they can only do certain things and this is what you're going to do here you're going to be remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but does this matter that you're not allowed to talk to your family or you talk to the person sitting next to you yes of course you know try to limit it you know we're not here to you know uh, be on Skype or anything like that or the whatsapp and everything limit that because the whole purpose is that you learn to develop an, e uh, an ethic in your life that you are, you know, beholding the presence of Allah Ta'ala and this presence of Allah Ta'ala is not merely just for these 10 days. You know, it's something that you're going to take with you. You know, we know we read about her people, the great men of Allah. For six months, they used to sit there in supplication asking for Ramadan. And once Ramadan was over, for another six months, they would sit there asking for acceptance. Now this is very important. Acceptance is the greatest key that we hold. <coughs> you know, there might be people who can knock out 100 rakats a night, read 20 Qur'ans in Ramadan. That's not, the, that's not what is required. Acceptance. When Sayyidina Ibrahim al-Islam and Ismail al-Islam, when they erected the Kaaba, the house of Allah, what did they say after they finished? Rabbana taqabbal minna. Allah accept it from us. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, if Allah accepts one deed from me, one deed, I would be considered from the God-fearing people. Just one deed. So make dua that Allah you accept. Allah, you gave me this tawfiq. No power, no strength to allow me to do this except by your will and Allah accept it from me. Now considering, uh, you know, uh, we posed a question to a shaykh who was on the radio a few days back using mobile phones in, 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 in the masjid. Now obviously mobile phones, you know, you, you know whatever uh, credits you have is your own credits, yes? You've paid for it. 
but there, there's going to be times where you're, going to, where you're going to be charging phones, or you might have a computer or a laptop, and if you're a student of knowledge, you might want to continue studying whilst you're sitting at the club. There's nothing wrong with that. Even if you're studying at university, you've got university jobs, uh, work to do projects and uh, whatever, you can continue doing that. Obviously, you know, you uh, divide your time accordingly. If you use the masjid electricity, you know, I don't know if the committee has made this announcement or not, but you know, what do you do? Ask their permission, right? If they, if they say, yes, you can use it, then this by all means is good, right? So therefore it's free for you. If not, then you need to put some money into the money box because this electricity doesn't belong to you. Because it's the house of Allah and so it works on donations and contributions and these contributions are not belonging to any one individual. And so, you know, speak to some elders of the masjid or whatever, and then if not, you know, it's good to make sadaqah in Ramadan. We know from a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ was generous, but then they said he was more generous when it was in Ramadan. Okay, so make a donation to the masjid and everything. Before you use, don't think I've used, you know, don't, in, 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 uh, in uh, charity, don't always think I have to do something to give the charity. No, give it before you do it. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said, and then looking around there, MashaAllah, we have some real young people here, and two of the people I want to mention from these particular people, he's the Prophet ﷺ said, a number of people will be shaded under the throne of the Rahman, okay? Two of those people are one, are who? A young man whose heart is attached to the Muslim, uh, sorry, uh, a, a young person who grew up in the worship of Allah. Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillah A young person who grew up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And the other person is a person whose heart is attached to the masjid Right? These are people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves So here you are young people attached to the masjid As well as attached to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So, you know, thrive and endeavor to do that extra that will remain with you once you leave here as well. That is the whole purpose. That is the purpose. You know, you know the Prophet said, this is a struggle. This is a struggle. You know, there will be times you, might, you will feel weak, you will feel tired, fatigued, hungry. There's times that you want to go out, you miss friends, you miss your parents or whatever. But this is what it's all about. <coughs> You know, when we read the lives of the young people who were at the time of the Prophet you know, you heard the Battle of Badr the other day. The first people who wanted to fight in the Battle of Badr wasn't Sayyidina Hamza or Sayyidina Ali or Sayyidina Ubaidah. No, these young two boys, they were the first ones to come out. And the, and, 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 and the people of Makkah, they said, no, 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 we haven't come to fight the Ansar here. We have to come to fight our own folks, meaning the Muhajirun. Then the Prophet ﷺ presented Sayyidina Hamza Ali and Sayyidina Ubaidah. So, in the masjid, try to read as much Qur'an as possible. This is Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi Unzila Fihil Qur'an. This is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed. So it's called Shahrul al-Qur'an, Shahrul al-Ramadan. It's the Shahrul al-Maghfirah, wa mercy and wa itqum min al-Nar, setting free from the hellfire, from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to, you know, make a habit of coming to this, uh, the five for daily prayers. Try to go to the front row. You know, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you knew what was in the front row, you would crawl if you had to crawl to the front row. The reward which is pertaining to the praying in the front row. Try to help the brothers who are with you. You know, make sure that you take a concern for another brother. The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, the best worship, the best worship after the compulsory worship, the acts of zakat, the salah, the hajj, the ramadan, and so forth. He said, what is the best worship? He said, is to bring joy and happiness to the heart of another believing person. So make sure you take others into consideration, people when they're asleep. Okay? I know you're going to be living up there here, but the, you try to spend time on your own. Make time... You're in the masjid, but make time with you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, they have what we call in the Arabic language, munajat. You know, make a dua that is specific for you and Allah. It doesn't have to be in Arabic, it can be in English, it can be in Urdu, whatever language. Allah is the creator of all languages. So speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is looking at our hearts. 
You know, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu said in a hadith that Allah doesn't look at our outer forms. He doesn't look at our shapes. Well, what does Allah ta'ala look at? What is Allah ta'ala reflecting on when we're doing this? Allah looks at our hearts. And what is in our hearts is our intentions. What is my intention here? Am I here for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is what we've come here, to seek the bounty, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think I'm going to stop here because time is very limited. Does anybody have any question, anything regarding etikaf? So if you need to take a shower, you can take a shower, you know, making wudu. Because you're a resident now in the masjid. Okay? So this area here is considered when it was built, and I'm sure this was the intention, to be built as part of the masjid. So you're making etikaf there. If you're up there, you can go downstairs. But you don't wander around in the car park or anything or in the bathrooms. You know, go and do what is necessary, your necessity. Once you've finished it, return to the place of the masjid in the limits and the boundaries of the masjid you don't have to necessarily sit in the place that you're sitting it to no, you can be in the masjid okay but I mean obviously I don't know how the arrangements are upstairs or whatever you are but if you have your own little you know covering of like a walls of uh, sheets you know sitting in there and then turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secretness is very important in Islam you know be very secretive there's things that you do between you and Allah alone you and Allah alone Nobody's aware of it. Nobody's aware of it. Even the Prophet said in the hadith that I quoted earlier that one of the other people of the seven people who will be given the shade is a person who gives in charity with his right hand. His left hand doesn't know what he gave because he didn't really count it. He just gave it in the path of Allah. See, it's very secret. Even with you, you're very secretive in what you do with Allah. Even I, oh, did I do that with Allah? Alhamdulillah. Praise Allah, send salutations on the Prophet send blessings on the Prophet as much as possible. The, the ulama said all our acts of worship are between acceptance and rejection. We don't know what Allah is going to accept, except for one action. What is that? Sending blessings on his beloved. See, you do not Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because we don't send blessings, we ask Allah. This is the way we say it, yes? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allah, you send blessings. So there's no doubt they are accepted. Read the Quran as much as you can. People who are learned, sit with them. Try to improve reading the Quran. Fix your prayers. It's not necessary that you have to spend every moment in ibadah. Everything that you will do will be considered as an ibadah. As long as the intention is right. They were commanded not. This is the only thing. They were commanded to do what? To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with true sincerity. Jazakallah khair. Any question? Does anybody have a question or anything? If not, then inshallah. May Allah give you tawfiq. Allah make it easy for you and make it a blessed one for you that you know this means a means of salvation in the hereafter and the you know means of us uh, you know the shafa of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Limited. Limited, yeah, yes, limited. Limit, limit using whatever you're using as mobiles or gadgets or whatever it is. But if you're using a CD player, using a computer to listen to the rules, to read the Quran, and then, you know, they're, they're fine. I mean, obviously, it's common sense. Yeah. It's common sense, right? So, you know, you use everything according to common sense. Our religion is totally based on common sense. So you use things that which are necessary and you don't exceed the bound. Tilka hududullah fala These are the boundaries of Allah. Do not overstep the boundaries of Allah. And it's common sense. Okay, I know we do say in English, common sense is not as common as you think, right? But no, use your common sense. If you need to make a call and, you know, you're sitting here, call your parents. Hello, mom, are you okay? How are you doing? This is Ibadah, yes or no? This is not, cool. this is not going to be considered using a phone excessively. No, this would be considered as a good deed. So, you know, you can use things like that, but use everything in moderation. You know, we are Ummah to Wasafa. We are a moderate Ummah. We will not exaggerate or we neglect things. Now we're in moderation of everything. Barakallah feekum. InshaAllah. May Allah give you the faith and accept your itikaf. So this is it. You turn to Allah now. You ask Him. You brought us here. Allah. Acceptance. Acceptance. Imam Ibn Atta'illa al-Iskandari rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the great, uh, the great Sufis, you know, he said, uh, maybe Allah ta'ala has opened the doors of worship, obedience. 
but he hasn't opened the doors of acceptance. Acceptance, that's where everything lies. Acceptance. When Allah Ta'ala accepts a person, Nada Fisma, Ya Jibrail, O Inni Ibu Fala. Oh Jibreel, I love so. When Allah Ta'ala accepts somebody, He says in the heavens, Allah calls Jibreel, I love so and so. For Jibreel, love him. And then Jibreel is, uh, uh, salam, he's commanded, he's told to go and announce in the heavens that Allah Ta'ala loves so and so. So love him. And then all the angels start loving them. And for you, the ulahul kabulu fi dunya. And Allah places, places even acceptance for him in this world. Acceptance is the key to everything. May Allah accept me and you and all our community. And may Allah alleviate the problems of all Muslims. May Allah deal with us in a manner which is yaliku bi kamalihi wa jalalihi wa jamalihi, which is, you know, which is according to Allah's generosity and His mercy and His forgiveness. Please go ahead. I know you've got lots to do, so go ahead and do whatever you need to do. Get ready for iftar and get ready to uh, become the host. So uh, Allah is your host now. Huh? You're at Allah's banquet. So take from it. And don't say, I'm full. <laughs> no, no, no. In, in Jannah is awaiting what never, uh, no eye has never seen, never uh, any ear has ever heard, and never occurred to the heart what is awaiting for Jannah. And you're in Jannah now. These are Riyadhul Jannah. The masjid is called the Riyadhul Jannah. This is why we're going to Medina and Munawwara. We sit in Riyadhul Jannah. Every masjid in the area of the general garden is a garden from paradise. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.